Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be unperturbable. Ghosted, but now she's back. I've got an email. This is from a guy. He met a girl online. He said it was a girl that totally knocked his socks off. They had four great dates, I believe. All four dates ended in a successful session of the Indoor Olympics. And then she was heading out of town for a trip with her friends. And then she just basically ghosted and disappeared on him for about a month and a half. And then she texts him out of the blue at 3 a.m. And then he texted her back the next day. And it's almost like she acted like she didn't even remember the fact that she texted him. Because probably she'd been drinking or whatever. And so now he's thinking about sending her a nasty message. And letting her know that he didn't appreciate her reaching out and jerking him around. And so this email brings up the importance of being unperturbable and not getting butthurt. Just having an unattached, take it or leave it kind of attitude. Because as you see, when I go through this email, this is a pretty common thing that there's obviously another dude. Maybe it's an ex-boyfriend because... What happens a lot of times is girl breaks up with a guy she was dating. She gets in the dating apps, trying to get over it, meets a new guy, probably like this guy here. Things go well and they progress over several weeks and then the ex is back in the picture and then poof, they disappear because emotionally they're anchored to the ex still and they're hoping that it's going to work out. And then as soon as things go sideways with the ex again, they're back. And I see some of the guys that are, I guess they're the red pill community guys, get very upset about that. And they say, well, you weren't her first choice. It's like, if you just met her and she'd been out of a relationship for a matter of weeks or maybe a month or two with a guy she was with for several years, she's emotionally anchored and bonded to him. And the bottom line is you got no leverage. And one of my closest friends... One of the guys I've learned a lot from over the decades is like he, when he started dating his wife, she was dating a guy that was actually older and more successful. He was a doctor. He was very well established. And she'd been seeing this guy, other guy longer. And my friend, who's one of my dearest friends in the whole world, I mean, we were in our early 20s. He was partying. He, was, he wasn't making a ton of money at the time. So he even admits, he's like, I wasn't the greatest catch, to be honest with you, with where I was at. And the guy she was dating was like 10 years older. He was a doctor, very successful, had his act together. And she was just kind of further on down the line with him. And so she ended up telling my friend that, hey, I'm going to kind of give things a chance with this other guy that I've been seeing. And he wasn't happy about that. He because he, he wasn't used to those kinds of things happening to him, but he was like, hey, give me a call if it doesn't work out. And sure enough, I think it was like five, six weeks later, she got in touch because it didn't work out with the other guy. And when she called him up, she's like, hey, let's go out. And he's like, awesome. He was glad to hear from her. He didn't take it personally. He didn't get buttered. He was honest about, he knew where he was at. Even to this day, 30, almost 30 years later, he's like, I was kind of a screw up at the time. And quite frankly, if you're going to compare me to the other dude, the other guy had his act together. He was successful. He was well off at the time. He was further along. He was more mature. And my buddy was like a party party guy, party boy. And he wasn't making a lot of money either. But at the end of the day, because he's a great guy, she came back. And they've always been together ever since. They got a great marriage. And they're very happy. They got beautiful children. Their kids are cool as fuck. So it all worked out. So at the end of the day, as a man, either way, if a fair maiden is showing you attention, well, of course a fair maiden is showing me attention because I'm awesome. You should have that attitude. You should get ma angry or mad or upset that a girl disappears and then comes back because, quite frankly, he went out there four times. He doesn't really know what's going on in her life. And love is allowing and so you allow, it doesn't mean you have to get into a relationship with her or choose to only be with her. It's bottom line, she reached out. You always should be, hey, great to hear from you. Because whatever you make a woman feel when she's with you is what she's going to associate with being with you. And so if every time she reaches out, it's like, oh, hey, great to hear from you. Come on in. Great. Let's, let's do something fun together. 
versus, oh, you didn't call me back fast enough. Oh, why did why did you leave me on read for a couple of weeks? Oh, I can't believe I heard her. Friend. I can't believe you texted me at three in the morning. What were you thinking? You think she's going to want to talk to you if, if that's the attitude? And if you're giving her that attitude, guess what? You're giving that angry, grumpy attitude to other women, which is a big problem that the guys in the red pill community have. They're pissed off. I've had countless guys over the years go, yeah, I got as soon as I got into the red pill community, my success with women stopped because it made me angry and bitter. And then I came back, started following your stuff again, and everything returned. So it's a good email that shows the importance of being unperturbable. So he says, hey, Corey, I met a girl that knocks my socks off online using your techniques. And I got her out on four dates. We went out, we had fun, and we hooked up each time. Well, as I talk about in 3% Man, a man's job in the courtship is just simply to create an opportunity for sex to happen, to hang out, to have fun, and to hook up. It's not your job to cause a commitment to happen or create a relationship. The reality is that should be the last thing on your mind. You just want to hang out, have fun, and hook up and let the best girl win you over. So if you're not trying to lock anybody down and then a girl you go out with a few times and have some fun with disappears, like you're going to – you should – if you know my work, you should assume, oh, well, maybe she got serious with some other guy or maybe the ex, an ex came back in the picture. It's like the horse is always returned to the barn anyways because I'm the best there is and of course she'll be back. That should be your attitude towards it. And then when she does come back, you'll be like, well, of course she came back. Kitty cats always return. They like to go where the fun is. And if you're easygoing, easy to get along with and you're unperturbable and you don't get butt hurt. You don't get mad. You don't get angry. Because if you're angry and you're butthurt, what does that communicate? That communicates that you're afraid. Because behind anger is always fear. And that's the opposite of confidence. And confidence is the number one most important thing that women find attractive in men. So display confidence and competence. And never show butthurt. It's like when you display butthurt and you display anger like this, it's you're being unattractive it's not helping your case it's not going to help you attract her or any other woman to you for that matter so do the things that are attractive and deal with your own insecurities and fears and doubts internally yourself don't make her bear the burden of your problems or your weaknesses or your insecurities or your butthurt or the things that set you off that you read in the red pill community this is not necessary so he says after the fourth date <clears throat> She went out of town, and I suggested that we FaceTime and play a game that we had played together, but this time over the phone as a date, and after that, she started acting wishy-washy. I would say also probably because it had only been four times, it was just kind of a casual hookup, and if she's going away with her friends and she feels like she's got to have a FaceTime date with you, she's probably starting to feel a little bit like, hey, this guy's getting a little attached, moving a little too fast. So, um, but at the end of the day, if it was me, and it seems like he might be a good student, that's the right move on, on his part. Because at the end of the day, you're going to bottom line her actions. And if you try to FaceTime, and then she bounces, and then especially when she disappears like this, you got to assume, oh, there's probably another guy in the picture, probably an ex, somebody that she was more into or has more time in with. So you, you're in a position of weak leverage anyways at that point. And there's nothing you can do. Just got to let the chips fall where they may. And remember, she'll be back. She proceeded to leave me on read. So I waited a week and text texted and she left me on read blatantly. So, well, that's not what I teach because dating is like tennis. You hit the ball over the net and she didn't hit it back. And then you sent another ball over when she ignored you. That communicates that you're giving up even more of your power. Because it's tennis. She doesn't reciprocate. If she's not like, hell yeah, I'd love to see you. Hell yeah, I'd love to FaceTime with you. Oh, I'm so glad to get a message from you. Let me text you back quickly. If they're not as excited to talk to you as you are to them, then match and mirror that. Don't get mad. Don't get upset. Because you just don't know what you don't know about this person. She really, despite the fact, the, the carnal knowledge that you have, you don't know her well enough. He says, so I backed off and didn't reach out at all. A month and a half goes by and she calls me at 3 a.m. on a weekend. Maybe she wanted a 3 a.m. booty call. Because that's what it kind of sounds like. They, 
they were at that casual hookup stage. Nothing really serious, but it stopped right after four dates. So he said, I didn't really know how to respond to this. And on one hand, I felt disrespected. So he was butthurt that she would reach out like that. You shouldn't get butter. She'd be like, well, of course she called me at 3 a.m. Because I'm easygoing. I'm easy to get along with. I didn't stress her out. I didn't give her a hard time when she didn't do what I expected. Of course she's reaching out to me at 3 in the morning. I'm glad that I'm the guy she thinks of at 3 a.m. in the morning or 12 noon or whatever. The bottom line is she's contacting you. And as the book says, if she's contacting you, it's probably because she wants to see you. And he says, on the other, I thought about the whole, when she reaches out, make a date. So I sent a message the next day saying, hey, what's up? To which she replied, oh, hey. <laughs> Obviously, probably because she's sober then. And he says, it's like she forgot she called me. Well, maybe she probably been drinking too much. Typically, people aren't up at 3 a.m. and reaching out to people when they're sober. He says, I couldn't stomach replying to this message, so I left her on read. Well, you don't, you shouldn't just ignore her. But I know she did it to you, but at the end of the day, you're emailing me about this girl. And I could tell that you're bothered that she disappeared on you. And the reality is you'd like to see her again. Otherwise, if you didn't, you would have never bothered writing the email. So I know you like the girl, and I know you want to see her again, and that's what you really want. But what you want her to do is not treat you like this anymore. But you also have to understand that there's probably other dudes in her life. Maybe an ex-boyfriend. You just don't know what you don't know. So the key is what, is, what are you making her feel when she reaches out? Are you glad to hear from her? Or are you going to give her a hard time? Because if you give her a hard time, she's going to be less inclined to reach out to you in the future. And if you want to get together with her again and share your secret worlds once again, yeah, it could be a dick. You're not going to get butt hurt. You're not going to get perturbed because it's going to get in the way. You're going to cock block yourself. It's just totally unnecessary. He says, it's been a few days and no word. Should I wait again to hear from her or should I text her and call her out for saying and say, I didn't appreciate being ghosted and getting a call from you at 3 a.m. I've had a lot of fun going out with you, but personally would prefer it if you were more respectful with your communication. Yeah, that's such a loving message. That's that's the kind of message that's going to make her go, yeah, I'm really glad that I drunk texted him at 3 a.m. He really seems happy to hear from me. He says, is that needy, direct, none of the above, any advice? It just communicates you're mad and you're butthurt. And so you're using anger to try to get her to correct her behavior. And so if she texts back, oh, hey, I was like, I would have just responded, hey, we should get together. I'd love to see you and catch up. And then invite her over to make dinner at your place. Hang out, have fun, hook up. But I wouldn't have ignored her. That would be a mistake. Now, give it a, give it a couple weeks and see if she reaches out again. And then shoot her a text. She may or may not ignore you. But like I said, it's like there was a it was a mistake to not message her because you, now you're showing... Your butt hurt. Whereas my impression, if because I've been doing this a long time, more than likely the reason she never replied to you is she knew you really liked her and she knew you really wanted to see her again. But someone probably was in the way of her spending more time with you. And that's why she just disappeared. Because in her mind, she can kind of leave it up in the air. And just like she did a month and a half later, she returned back to you when it potentially looked like she was going to get freed up. So I would say more than likely the fact that she reached out at 3M wasn't just because she was buzzed. It's probably because things with whoever has had her attention are looking like they're in doubt. But the fact that she just replied, oh, hey, shows that now that she's sober, probably still not at a place where she's really ready to see you. I had a phone session with a guy the other day that was in, in that position. He had a girl he hadn't heard from. In a couple of years, they just got mad. They had a, a bad breakup, and then she just showed right back up. But every time he tried to make a date, she was evasive or would disappear for a few days and then show and then respond a few days after that and change the subject. 
And so it was the same thing. There was obviously somebody else that she had been seeing that wasn't completely done with. And the bottom line is if you guys are sending this email in, it's because I know you want to see her again. And so my job as a coach is to help you get what you want. Now, it's up to you to decide whether you want to stay with her, have a relationship, friends with benefits, or whatever. It, you're, we're all adults here, and so it's up to you to decide what you want. A coach's job is to help you get what you want, not be your judge or tell you. I mean, obviously, if somebody's toxic or is not a good person or they have lack of integrity, I'm going to point these things out in the emails but in this case we know we all know he wants to see her again so what can we do to make it so he has the best possible chance to do that to see her again and to explore things and put him in control whether he can decide to continue seeing her or say hey it's been great meeting you but um, there's a there's no spark or there's not enough chemistry between us or i like you but i want to date other people <clears throat> and i wish you all the best but the bottom line is he's in the driver's seat versus the guy going, what the hell happened? We had four great dates and then she just disappeared. So like I said, I, in this case, because you just ignored her, I would wait it out two weeks and then text her again, see if you can get her out on a date. But it's also possible she reaches back out. But like I said, the fact that all she said was, oh, hey, sounds like now that she's sober, she probably didn't really want to reach out. But also because she didn't really say much, she could and, and the fact that you didn't reply, just let it be and see what happens. See if she reaches out again in the future. So if you got a question or a challenge, go to my website, understandrelationships.com. Click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.